Hi, my name is Wilman Ziara, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I'm thrilled to be speaking with my friend, an award-winning star of stage and screen in the music worlds, Karen Mason. For more on Karen, you can click and see her bio below this video. And before I interview her, here's a sneak peek of Karen's amazing talent. Well, the music of life seems to be like a bell that is ringing for me. Karen, how are you? Hey, Will, how are you doing? So I'm good doing, to see you. Oh my God, so great to see you. And the audience just got to hear a little bit of almost like being in love, a fabulous arrangement for your weekly live <laughs> show that you do, Mason's Making Music. I know. I started doing that last April and because um, basically I just wanted to sing and I wanted to learn how to do this streaming and you know self-taping and so i thought just jump in karen and well, started doing them every thursday at five eastern and i've been having a ball with it i really enjoyed it well i have been having a ball watching and i know that you have fans all over the country and the world tuning in as well i want to i mean we could i could speak with you for hours on end and we have you know, yeah. in our Starbucks meetings pre-pandemic. <laughs> but um, listen, I want to let the audience know on a personal level that before I was so fortunate to work with you, when I had this crazy idea to reconceive Candor and Ebb's musical, The Act, and to have you be one of my leading ladies, I was such a fan of you. I mean, I wore Thank out, you. wore out my In the World Goes Round album. Wore out! You know, somebody, Jimmy Walton just got in touch with me last week was the 30th anniversary of its opening. I, can't, I couldn't believe it, 30 years ago. 30 years ago, I was putting on roller skates and playing banjos and pushing around chairs and singing that fabulous Candor and Ebb music. It was, yeah, that was a great CD too. A great show and a great CD. Great CD. And you know, yeah. both Susan Stroman and Scott Ellis being heroes of mine, to think about their collaboration and that really being kind of the beginning of their collaboration together, but as, you know, Helmers. And- Yeah, it was an amazing experience too, because they, we really, it really was a workshop because they would add songs and then take them away, add songs and then take them away. So we were always learning the, a new opener or a new closer or some new ballad. It was it was really a journey with that show. They did a beautiful, beautiful job with that. Well, it doesn't surprise me, Karen, that the Candor and Ebb songbook and your skill set are kind of a match <laughs> made in heaven. But before going into that, I want to take a little trip down memory lane. And I want to know where you grew up and when did you know that you had this incredible singing voice? Well, thank you. Um, I, I was born in New Orleans and then my dad kept getting transferred. I ended up in Chicago and with my family, of course. And uh, we had music around the house all the time. My mom was being trained when she was younger as a concert pianist. Oh, wow. So we always had music. She was always playing or always had records on. There was music on constantly, whether it was, you know, uh, operettas, you know, the Reader's Digest um, operetta collection, or Frank Sinatra was her favorite, Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland. So I grew up listening to that. And I always loved being the center of attention, being the middle child that I am. 
And my sisters and I would put on shows. Uh, we called them Fourth of July specials. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we would put on these shows for my parents and uh, my aunt and any adults who couldn't get away fast enough. And we would put these shows on. I loved it. I just loved it. When I got into high school, uh, it was the made way to meet boys. I went to an all girls Catholic high school and I needed a, a musical. You met the boy that's in a musical. Exactly. So I, I, the only way, I went to an all girls Catholic high school, the only way to get a date for prom was to go, for me, was to go and audition for one of the musicals. So I did. And right. I tell you from that moment on, it was, that was home for me. I, I always knew the stage was magic, but I never knew it was home until that very moment. And I worked my way up in those musicals and finally got a role and I haven't looked back since it, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be doing it. I knew people responded to my voice. Mm. I, I don't know if I've ever quantified it, mm. but I know that uh, that is how people responded to me was when I would sing. So use your ace, right? <laughs> well, Karen, I mean, not only as a friend, but as a fan. Well, thanks. It's not a surprise that you mentioned Judy Garland and Frank Sinatra, oh. two of the ultimate interpreters of song, who in their within their craft literally create playlets or five-act plays within right. everything they sing. And you do that, Karen. And not only that, and I know it's God given, but you know, you work on your craft. You're you know absolutely I do. Hard. I'm still studying voice, believe it or not. And, but it's, it's not only the raw talent, Karen. And I know that you've been told this, I'm sure, from many people. There's this dichotomy of the strength and this power, but yet also this intimate, vulnerable, raw, from the gut sensibility that you do on a dime. And it's... Again, you, it's once in a generation. Well, thank you. I think many would call it neuroses. <laughs> um, you know, here's the thing. I love storytelling. I mm. always have. It's to evident. me, it's about the story. And every song has a story, whether you're doing some, you know, almost like being in love. To me, even though that's this lovely up-tempo that, you know, is just joyous, there's a story there. That's right. There's a story with, with every song you sing. You just have to find it and commit to it. And, and I enjoy that. It brings, it brings me great joy to, you know, to be able to tell a story that's a, a, a personal story, but nobody really knows how personal because I got that song that, that I can communicate with. And yeah, I love what I do. You know, it's, I work hard at it. We all do. Uh, and it's evident, uh, Karen, it's evident. I mean, you know, you, you hear, you hear actors, you know, the, oh, the, the, the performers who can reach the back of the house. For me, for you, you're reaching across Broadway into New Jersey. <laughs> no, but literally, I mean, in, I know people just saw a little, a, a small clip of you in your home performing, but you've performed on Carnegie Hall. You've played Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard on Broadway. You've starred in Frank Wildhorn's Wonderland as the, the, the infamous, you know, queen, the queen of, of hearts. hearts. You know, you've, you've played so many, you've been in, you've starred in Hairspray on Broadway. You've been in, you were in the original production of Mamma Mia on Broadway. Oh, you not only transcend across the back of the theater, across the street, across the Hudson, as Karen Mason, who has performed in Headline Carnegie Hall, but all of these roles that you make your own, because again, going back to those two people you mentioned, Sinatra and Garland, they right. had that kind of thing. And you have that untangible thing that you imbue in everything you do. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. Well, that's so lovely. I appreciate that. You know, it's, mm. it's hard to know how it's uh, being received. You just continue doing your work and, and you know, hoping that people respond to, 
to what you're what you're doing. And luckily, I've I've you know I, listen. I feel very lucky that I get to do Broadway theater in general. I get to do nightclubs and cabarets, concerts, recording, television. You know, I I I'm I feel lucky that that I. Um, have all these things to, to keep me distracted and occupied. Uh, you know, it, it is good. I like what I do. But and you I, also as long as- word... Oh, go huh? ahead. No, no, please. Uh, you mentioned the word work. You work on your craft. You, you, and you're constantly fine tuning and you don't rest on the raw talent that you've been given. And you know, I want, I know there are gonna be a lot of artists who are seasoned and not, and especially those also thinking about coming on board this brand new app, Phoenix. And I, I only think about, I mean, I know, Karen, you've traveled the country and the world performing, and you've felt firsthand the transcendent quality of your talent. And, you know, I think about you reaching even more people outside of already a very well-established fan base here in the States and outside. And- um, Well, this is the great opportunity with, with Phoenix is that we can reach a much larger audience. And, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a great gift. That's a great gift. I, I want to be able to, I know people would respond to my music if they just heard it. That's right. It's given and, an opportunity, you know, and I can think okay. about you doing your live stream, right? That yeah. can then be seen now through the Phoenix app in the East. And again, great singing, great storytelling, great acting, great melodies and lyric. They're transcendent. Yeah, they are. They are. And I know right. when, you, when I watch, um, you know, artists from other countries and I may not understand what they're saying, but you know exactly you what feel they're it. saying. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I can talk to you forever, but <laughs> I am so excited to be speaking with you today. And again, I want people to, you know, to, if they want to see more of these wonderful interviews, you can subscribe to this channel. But everyone, please check out Karen Mason. All of her information is below this video. She is, she's a, she's a superstar. Like the, it, it, it's a never ending well of talent and who's, she's always been about the work, but also Karen, it's like when you meet one of your heroes, when I met you, I'm like, Oh my God. And she's also one of the kindest people I've ever met. And, but I know you hear that from a lot of, but really from me to you. Well, thank you. Thanks. You know, listen, I, I like what I do. I like who, who I have coffee with at Starbucks and I like getting to know people and getting to know you was a, a great opportunity. You know, you're a, I only want to be around the people who want to move forward and try new things and explore and keep working only when it's joyful. And that's, those are the people you want to have around you. So I appreciate your letting me be part of this. Oh, great advice, my friend. And uh, I adore you. And thank you for thank you. being here today. I adore you back. <laughs> In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.